In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You may please be seated. For there is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. Words taken from today's epistle, in the Acts of the Apostles. My dear brethren, these words were spoken by St. Peter, our first pope, the Prince of the Apostles, while he and St. John the Apostle were preaching Christ in Jerusalem in the midst of the Jews, high priest, his council, and the population in general. And Jesus, our Lord's beautiful name, it means Savior. He is our divine Savior. And Holy Mother Church has dedicated this Sunday um, after, what do you call it, the first Sunday after the first of the year. Uh, well, it can be moved, but it's been dedicated to the holy name of Jesus. Uh, something that should be very close to all Catholics' hearts because he came into this world for our salvation and we should be always willing to go to him as, as, you know, as our God and also, uh, you know, as, as our Savior and, and also as a friend. Uh, now, it, you know, so we should recall because it's such a sacred name that, uh, the second commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, uh, is something to be obviously avoided. You know, our Lord's name, uh, using, you know, uh, even the word God in, a, in an appropriate manner, uh, you know, we, we should be reminded because of, of who God is and our relationship to, to Him. We're, we're the creature. He is our creator. We always owe Him that obedience and that, that deference and that um, respect and veneration and great awe. Now, as we've just read in the Gospel, Jesus, uh, which... As we quote, which was called by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, by this sentence, St. Luke indicates that the name of Jesus had been decreed and predestined by God for this child from all eternity to demonstrate that he would be the savior of the world. So let us recall what we say is our belief, quoting from the Nicene Creed, as we'll be praying shortly. And, you know, for us men and for our salvation, he came, came down from heaven and was made man. Therefore, it is only right and just that we adore him, and at the same time, thank God who has bestowed upon him this name for our good. I will now proceed to the three main points of the sermon, demonstrating how, firstly, the holy name of Jesus consoles us, secondly, how it defends us, and thirdly, how it makes us burn with love. Begging for light from Jesus and Mary, let us now go forward. Now, Jesus is the great consoler, for he is the omnipotent God, as well as man. We will find relief in our afflictions because he loves us and died for us. Now, we find in the book of Canticles, chapter 1, the name of Jesus, that thy name is as oil poured out. Uh, that was, what do you call it, concerns our Lord's name. So that was predicted in the Old Testament. Thy name is as oil poured out. Now, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, he... he Commenting on this passage, he says, For oil serves for light, for food and for medicine. So especially the name of Jesus is light. It is light when preached. So whenever our Lord is preached, you know, according to how, how he revealed himself and, and, and lived his, all those years on the earth, and his apostles went and preached the truth, and the Catholic Church carries down our Lord's teaching to this day, you know, it brings light. Uh, you know, it dispels darkness. Now, he goes on to say that the light of faith shone forth so suddenly in the world, you know, at that time, that soon thereafter, so many Gentile nations knew the true God and were baptized. This came about by the preaching in the name of Jesus and sharing his doctrine. So that's why, you know, it goes on to this day. We must persevere in this because, you know, God came down and offered salvation to all men, those that will receive his word. Now, our Lord's name is food that nourishes the soul. It will give strength in the midst of the miseries and persecutions of the world. The apostles rejoiced when persecuted for the name of Jesus, we should recall, such as in Acts 5. They went from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. So if someone ever would, uh, you know, mock our Christianity, being a Catholic, whatever you believe in, in what do you call it, what our Lord taught or what the church teaches, you know, with the faith and morality, uh, we, that's that's a badge of honor. Unfortunately, there are souls that still haven't recognized the truths, uh, and, and so we have to persevere in this, uh, as we know in this world today. 
leaders that be, uh, whatever, in high offices and uh, these groups, you know, they want to push out God. They have for a long time, God in general and our Lord Jesus in, in particular, because the devil, you know, has people, whether well, they know they're not working for him, doing their work, and they want to stamp that out. They don't want to give our Lord the proper uh, air in, in, in public or even in private. They want to, uh, what do you call it, take that out. That's why Christianity you know, it, it is under persecution. And it may, the Lord knows how it will happen, but grow worse and worse. Now, the name of Jesus is also a medicine to those who invoke it. Uh, anyone is afflicted in trouble or in despair, you know, they pronounce the name of Jesus devoutly, and immediately the cause of upset will cease and peace will return. So that's something, uh, you know, that, that should be a, a practice that stays on a person's mind. I repeat here, if anyone has had the misfortune to have fallen into sin, you know, and thinks he can't be pardoned, do invoke the name of, of life, that is our Lord, you know, and one shall immediately be encouraged to hope for pardon. He obtains pardon for sinners, our Lord does, no matter how big a number of sins may be. So please always keep that in mind, you know, thinking, oh, well, I can't, I've, maybe I've done this in time. You no, no, that's, that's the, the devil tempting you to always, always remember our Lord, he came, if it was just for one person, he would have come for that soul. Now sadly though, so many sinners refuse to invoke this saving name, for they do not wish to be cured of their infirmities. In plain words, people, they love their sins and want to remain in them. Now while our Lord, he is willing to heal wounds, many there are who will not let the divine doctor come to them and heal them. You know, our Lord will not force himself upon people. Always, We always have to recall that. Uh, no first forced conversions. Some other groups out there are into such things, but that you know, that's totally wrong, and it's not converting to the true God. Now, he respects their free will. Now, here's a quick story uh, I'd like to, con to convey to, to put across this point. One time, the Venerable Sister Mary of Jesus Crucified, a Sicilian nun, she saw our Savior, as it seemed, going about with medicines in his hand in a hospital, seeking to cure the sick who were there. Now, tragically, these miserable people, instead of thanking our Lord and imploring him to come to, the, to, to them, he, you know, drove them away, drove him away, I'm sorry. They, they, they didn't want any part of, him, of our Lord. In a similar way do many sinners, after they have of their own free will poisoned their souls with sins, refuse the gifts of health, meaning the grace proposed to them by Jesus Christ, and they thus remain lost because of their infirmities. Now, dear people, do not be like the unrepentant sinners that I have just described. Make use of what our Lord has given, namely the sacraments. They are God's way of giving grace to men. You know, if, if one is not in a state of sanctifying grace, one should make a perfect act of contrition, being truly sorry for all one's sins, and get themselves to the sacrament of confession. No matter what, what one may have done, or however long it has been, our Lord, through his ordained priest, will be there, meeting with you as the Father came to accept, embrace, and welcome his prodigal son. You know, think of, think of, you know, as my, my old priest, Father Lazar would say, think of the priest as God's eraser. You come, you tell him, he'll wipe it away now. And afterwards, you know, our Lord, he forgets that you have offended him. So the, the friendship, it's started anew. It's picked up where it left off, and, it, and you, you know you can pr improve upon it. Now, uh, you know, faithful Catholics, you will not, they will not put off going to confession, especially if they have fallen into mortal sin. A truly contrite penitent, he will have the joy of knowing that they are truly forgiven if they unveil themselves of this sacrament. So that's how healing. You hear there's things out there. It's been for some time. Uh, what do you call it, on the advertisements, television, what have you. Uh, you know, going to, to these public meetings, especially besides individual one-on-ones, you know, uh, almost like a confession session. Uh, you know, I, I was this, but I had moved along, uh, whatever my problem was, you know, in front of a TV audience or whatever. You know, that's not what our law is asking for that. That's And uh, for some of them people, that could, you know, vanity amongst other things. And that doesn't do the trick, especially if you've had a serious problem, serious sin. You know, our Lord gave us the grace, you know, uh, Nobody to to recognize when we've done wrong. So never fear going to confession, no matter what it may, may concern. Our Lord is there to to pick us pick us up and restore us. 
Now, let us also never fear the name of Jesus, as told repeatedly by our Lord himself, such as in John 16, 23, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. So he wants what's best for you. So you ask for something, and if he believes you should, should be getting it to receive it, he will, he will do that for you, at least in the way he knows is best for you. Now, second point. Now, Jesus' name defends us against the deceits and attacks of our enemies. The prophet Isaiah says he is called the mighty God in chapter 9. Now, by Christ dying humbly and obediently on the cross, God the Father raised him to such a sublime dignity that he could have no higher. So, he, you know, our Lord, he showed his true love for us, and uh, God the Father recognized that, and he is, that's why we, he is our Savior. Uh, now, as told us by St. Paul in Philippians 2, For which cause God hath given him a name, which is above all names, that every knee should bow, of those that are in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Now his name is powerful in heaven, since it can obtain all graces for us. Powerful on earth, because it can save all who speak it with devotion. Now it's powerful in hell, because his name makes all the devils tremble. They shudder when they hear our Lord's name, because they know he is, he is God and he has saved men. Now, so the devil and his minions shuddering at the utterance of our Lord's most sacred name, you know, that causes them to recall that Christ was the mighty one who destroyed the power and control that they had over, over men before the coming of our Lord. Uh, now, our Lord, he conveyed this to his disciples in St. Mark chapter 16. In my name, you will cast out devils. Now, we know that the church uses our Lord's name in exorcisms in order to drive out the infernal spirits from those who are possessed. So our Lord's name is very powerful. Those those there that believe in our Lord and, and say it with devotion, with veneration, you know, our Lord will always help you. Now, when being tempted, listen to the advice of St. Lawrence Justinian. Whether you are tempted by the devil or attacked by men, invoke the name of Jesus. In one of his sermons, he told us this. Now, if temptations do not cease to persecute you, do persist to call on Jesus and you will never fail. Also, add the name of our Blessed Mother Mary, for she is also terrible to hell. You know, the, the faithful who practice this devotion, you know, they remain safe and are victorious in the battle. Uh, so when you're doing that, fly to prayer. That's, that's the other thing. Whenever you're tempted, whatever situation, fly to prayer and use Jesus and Mary. Jesus and Mary, help me. Jesus and she, Jesus and Mary, protect me. Something to that effect. But get in that beautiful habit and even to say the, say the holy names. Uh, during the, during the day, that way there, when there is an assault, if you persist in it, you you will know if you've been saying it with the with attention, you know, and devotion, you will not have sinned. So that is that is why you know always let Jesus be on our lips in a reverent manner. Uh, don't be like sadly so many in the world that uh, use his name uh, for the pro inappropriately. Now, as written in the imitation, the inter imitation of Christ, we ha we find this short prayer. Jesus and Mary is easy to remember and powerful to protect. It's strong enough to deliver us from all the assaults of our enemies. Remember too, dear faithful, that at the, t at the time when one is dying, you know, a time that each and every one of us, uh, you know, young and old, will arrive at one day, the priest who is assisting the dying person will call to their aid the name of Jesus to deliver them from the assaults of hell which in the final agony of life is so terrible. So always remember that. That way there you have a good relationship with our Lord during life. And the Blessed Mother, when you're dying, you're not, you're not going to be worrying about worldly things. You're going to be concerned with your salvation, preparing yourself as well, and having our Lord's name on your lips, and having a crucifix nearby to kiss, besides the assistance of the priests of people that are about you. That will be your consolation. And the devil, he... he He's going to try, but he will not be able to fight that. You be faithful to our Lord. Our Lord will not let anything bad happen to you. Now, the third point. The name of Jesus inflames with holy love all who pronounce it with devotion. It recalls all that our Lord has done and suffered to save us. St. Bernard now tells us, The name of Jesus places before thee all that God has done for the salvation of the human race. And also, as St. Paul wrote in Ephesians 5, he hath loved us and hath delivered, uh, hath delivered himself for us. So 
You know, just that mean that that compacts Jesus when said by a follower with devotion. It it reminds God, okay, this is this is a child of mine, a child of God. He's been baptized, and he 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 loves my son. You know, I'm going to give all I can to you know, all the graces and assistance that person needs on this earth to serve me well, and so one day that he can come with me to heaven. So that that's something else to always think of our Lord's name that's going to help put you in that proper position. Now, it is impossible for, for a soul that is faithful to pronounce our Lord's name and not to be inflamed with love towards one who has loved us so much. For recall, as written by Isaiah in chapter 53, I quote, He hath borne our infirmities and carried our sorrows, end quote. God became man, a man who was meek, benignant, kind, and full of all virtues. Now, he cured our wounds, he was despised, and he himself was wounded savagely, and he died on that cross for us. You know, his love can only be returned by our loving him. You know, we do this by keeping his commandments. So we have the great example always in, in the church, the beautiful crucifix, uh, showing our Lord outstretch what he did. I mean, he could not have done anything more for us. So, you know, you know, we only, he only asks that we love him in return. And he gives us so many opportunities to do that daily. And now, also, we need to recall that happiness comes from truly loving God. You know, the saints can certainly attest to this. St. Rose of Lima knew of this happiness. For from her mouth came out such a burning flame of love after she had received our Lord in Holy Communion, that it burned the hands of those that gave her water, which was a custom in those days after receiving Holy Communion to be given water, to drink after, to, they would drink that after Holy Communion. So she had such an ardent love for our Lord that, that that could occur. Also recall that St. Philip Neri had his ribs forced out to give room to his heart in order for it to beat more freely. Because he loved our Lord so much. It was such a fervent love that he, you know, whenever, especially I'm sure when he was close to our Lord at the altar and spoke of our Lord, you know, he, he said his heart certainly shown it. And other saints attested the same similar things that, it, you know, they had that burning desire and love to be with our Lord. Now one can only pronounce our Lord's name devoutly by the work of the Holy Ghost. You know, as we are reminded by St. Paul in 1 Corinthians, uh, don't let the name of Jesus be strange to us. If he is in your heart, I pray to keep him there and invoke him with affection. Now we ask for grace from the Holy Ghost to restore Christ's friendship if that friendship has been severed or, you know, or, you know, to help us if it's difficult at this time. Now, in closing, dear people, when being in affliction, call upon the name of Jesus. And he will console you. In temptation, call upon his name, and he will give us the strength to stand against our enemies. Finally, if we have dryness in prayer, in our cold and divine love, invoke the holy name, and he will inflame your heart. Happy will be the soul of one who dies, and is fortunate to do so, while pronouncing the holy names of Jesus and Mary, his blessed mother and our mother, by accustoming oneself, oneself to repeating regularly during life, and asking specifically for this favor to die with our Lord's name on his lips, the all merciful God will grant us our wish. May our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ always bless you through his Immaculate Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.